Howdy partner, in this video we're going to look at VanillaJS cell renderers in AG Grid. That's the way of allowing you to put your own JavaScript component inside the cell. We'll start with the AG Grid application. On the left hand side, you'll see that we have some column defs, default call def, and we are using fetch to load some row data from a server. And on the right hand side, we can see our application is running. Let's start by creating a simple component to say hello world. This component is a functional component. It can return either a piece of HTML string or HTML DOM element. I will use simple comp on the athlete column by passing the component to the column definition property called cell renderer. On the right, you can see athlete column is using simple comp and saying hello world. Saying hello world is not very useful. So let's have a look at what params we get from the grid by printing them to our console. If we open our dev console here, we can see that it's printed once for each row. Let's just open one of them and we can see all this juicy stuff that's provided to us. If you want to know what all of these are, then you should check the documentation. <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, let's bring our attention to the value here. This is the value that should be displayed inside the cell. I will close down the console and update simple comp to display value. Now, athlete column is displayed same as before, but by using simple comp to display the value. Why don't we have some fun with components and make a class component? You can use either functional component or class component. It's better to use class component when your component needs to manage state. Our class component will display two buttons and a cell value. I will add event listeners and event handlers to the buttons. When I click the button, it will alert the button symbol and cell value. Now that I have the class component, let's add it to age column. And all of these buttons now appear on every cell that's using the class component. If I click on the button, you can see the information from the click handler and the params, the symbol and the athlete age. Next, let's talk about what we have inside the class component. In it gets called once before the renderer is used. And here we receive params. They are the same as we received in the simple comp. We create a DOM element to act as the topmost element in our component and reference it in the class attribute eGUI. Get the button references and add event listeners and handlers. The grid calls getGUI to get the top level DOM element from the component. What you return here is what the grid inserts into the grid cell. As you might have guessed, refresh gets called whenever the cell is refreshed and you could update the value without destroying the component by providing logic on how to refresh and returning true. However, we are returning false, which means if refresh is called, the grid will remove the component from the DOM and create a new component in its place with the new values. Destroy is where we would do the cleanup. For example, removing event listeners and handlers from the buttons. It is called once after rendering has finished. And you probably realized by now, it's just a class component, meaning the possibilities are endless. Check the documentation for more details. Let's have a closer look at the column definitions. Right now, we have two different cell renderers for two different columns, athlete and age. I will put class component onto athlete column as well. And we can see buttons appear on this column as well. Now, why don't we remove it from individual columns and instead use it at the default column level to appear on all columns? And maybe there's a column where we don't want the renderer to get used. We can override the default inside column defs and set cell renderer to null for the specific column. Now I will put the same renderer back onto two columns and talk about cell params. I'm going to quickly change the component so it only has one button and button text will come from params. Let's quickly add the cell renderer params. Button text amazing and grand. So what's happening here is we are passing the button text to cell renderer params. And in the renderer, we are accessing the button text from the params. Now you can see the class component used in two places, in the athlete column and in the age column, but it's configured a bit differently. Here we have amazing button and there we have grand button. Now let me remove the renderer params and I will show you something neat. This component is outside the grid. It will probably be the one you use the most. However, if you are hacking some quick test app, you can put a function variant of cell render component in here to return a DOM object or a string of HTML. So right now we have two columns with components. We've got class component, we've got inline component. 
But what if we want to use two components inside the same column, have different components for each row based on the data? This can be achieved with a cell renderer selector. Let me show you how. First, I will make a copy of class component, rename class component to push component, and name the other one pull component. Fix the renderer reference in the athlete column and move year column closer. Then add the cell renderer selector to the year column. So this is the selector function. It's provided instead of cell renderer. The selector function gets params. The values inside here are the same values that you get as params inside a cell renderer. We are looking at the value and if the value is 2008, we use the pull component. And if the value is 2012, then we'll use push. And you can see here in the year column, wherever we have 2008, we've got pull button. And wherever we have 2012, we've got push button. The return type here is an object. Whatever we specify for the component will be used as a cell renderer. So this property here is equivalent to the cell renderer property. We can also specify params to pass to the renderer in here. And those could be used inside the cell renderer for that particular row in that column. And now you are one with the grid. Oh, and we finished the video of getting started with cell renderers inside AG Grid in Vanilla.js. We saw how to create simple functional components. We created a class component and we talked about the class component interface. We saw how to configure components and columns. We also provided params to the individual cell renderers. And we also saw how to use cell renderer selector to specify a different cell renderer for each row. If you like what you saw, please comment, please share, tell your friends. May the force of the grid be with you.